Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the preliminary scientific results from the DART mission that actually occurred only a few months ago, that as you might remember, was responsible for redirecting a moon of a small asteroid by directly colliding with it at an extremely fast velocity. Essentially allowing the scientists to finally figure out if this is a viable tactic for a potential redirect mission if there is some kind of a dangerous asteroid headed toward planet Earth in years to come. And as you might have learned from some of the previous videos, this was a tremendously successful mission, and the scientists were actually confused about why it was so successful. With the collision that was observed by several different satellites and several observatories on the planet, including of course the James Webb Space Telescope, resulted in things like a tremendously long cometary tail, approximately 10,000 kilometers in length, and moreover resulted in a redirect of the asteroid by a total value of approximately 30 times higher than what the scientists expected. Or to be more exact, the scientists here expected that the orbit of this moon would change by approximately 70 seconds. But instead it changed by approximately 32 minutes, suggesting that the effects from this collision were dramatically higher. And so that's kind of what the scientists were trying to figure out for the past few months with some of the preliminary results explaining what might have happened. But intriguingly enough, a lot of these observations and effects to some extent were predicted in this paper that was published just a couple of weeks before the actual collision. We'll talk about this near the end of the video. Because this provides a lot of the explanations for what might have occurred. And so first, what exactly is this asteroid? Well, Didymus, the larger rock, has a small partner known as Dimorphos. That's the one that NASA collided with. And in terms of size, appearance, and even composition, it represents a group of asteroids that the scientists believe have the highest chance to potentially collide with our planet in the next few thousands of years. A lot of the near-Earth asteroids, especially the ones that we haven't discovered yet, seem to have extremely similar parameters. This asteroid, along with many similar asteroids, is composed of chondrites, a rocky material formed from dust and relatively small pieces of rock that existed early on in the solar system and coalesced into these larger objects we refer to as asteroids. And so basically this is a collection of rubble, not necessarily an actual large rock. With pretty much most of the asteroids discovered so far, especially the more dangerous ones, generally possessing very similar properties. And in this case both Didymus and Dimorphos seem to have very similar composition. This was one of the more recent discoveries. A lot of this was actually achieved by studying the reflection of sunlight from all the ejecta following the collision and by looking at how solar radiation stretched the ejecta into twin tails. And by then comparing this with known comets and a lot of other tails, the scientists were able to figure out what sort of a composition this has. But more importantly, this also allowed the scientists to figure out the total mass of the displaced material. Because even though the initial simulations suggested it is going to be a tiny explosion, with potentially a small tail, the reality was much different. Even though the craft itself was not particularly big, it ended up ejecting approximately 1000 metric tons. Quick Google search reveals that this is somewhat equivalent to a typical cargo ship, with recent calculations also discovering that the total amount of impact resulted in a change of momentum approximately 3.6 times greater than the expected value. Or in other words, by producing this ejecta, it added approximately 240% of total momentum to deflect the body. With all of this extra momentum coming from the ejecta itself, to some extent acting like a rocket engine. Which of course suggests that if the asteroid was made from something else, for example if it was more solid, or maybe made out of some kind of a volatile material, or potentially made from even smaller grains, this would result in a completely different amount of redirection. For a hard rock, for a hard surface, it would very likely be much less, basically similar to the expected value, with the orbital change being about 70 seconds. And so this insane amount of ejecta that was generated as a result of the collision turned this asteroid into a kind of a less efficient rocket just for a little bit, with the resulting crater that was generated by the collision sort of acting like a rocket nozzle, with all of this contributing the majority of the effect. In other words, most of the redirection really happened because of the ejecta, not because of the collision. And that's pretty much exactly what the scientists were able to kind of identify in the study that you can find in the description. In this case, this was a really intriguing study, because it involved a miniaturized version of all of this right here on planet Earth. And so here they actually constructed a kind of a replica of a chondrite asteroid, and then collided an object moving at approximately 5 kilometers per second with the asteroid replica. 
in the process discovering how a lot of the debris here creates extra momentum by essentially redistributing some of the mass and expelling it in a certain direction, with pretty much nothing left at the end. Here's actually what the resulting debris sort of looked like following this collision. But what's intriguing about this study is that their model was able to predict that the resulting collision would create approximately 3.4 times more momentum because of the resulting ejecta. And since the observations revealed that it was about 3.6 times higher, the actual prediction is extremely close. It's probably a little bit off because in this case this object was moving a little bit slower. And having someone's theory pretty much agree with the actual observations provides an almost definitive explanation for what happened here. And more importantly, provides more evidence that this is an extremely efficient technique at redirecting various types of asteroids, even by using smaller objects. In case you were wondering how they were able to shoot something so fast at this particular object, they used this right here, a large two-stage light gas gun facility that literally resembles a massive gun that can shoot out things at several kilometers per second. You can learn more about this in one of the files in the description below. And so the results from the observations and the experiment definitively suggest that if you have something that's moving really really fast and then collides with the typical asteroid, it will result in the asteroid briefly turning into a miniature rocket, with the collision speed and also the composition of the asteroid very likely playing the most important role, but also probably the shape of the craft itself with the overall cross-section most likely playing a role as well. Depending on the final shape of the crater that it generates, it will produce different amounts of total propulsion. But more intriguingly, even though the initial change in velocity and the orbit was relatively small, over time this will adapt to a dramatic change in orbit as these rocks orbit around one another. And so even now, continuous observations of these two asteroids are really important in figuring out what effects this has long term. Here's actually one of the ways the scientists usually measure the orbit of the smaller asteroid around a larger one. They essentially look at these changes in brightness over time. And so one of the suggestions from some of the recent studies is actually in regards to the change of shape and also possibly change of the rotation speed of one or even both of these asteroids. It's actually quite likely that the resulting collision will have actually changed the distribution of mass around the smaller asteroid and as a result will affect the larger asteroid as well, especially as some of the debris might actually come back and fall back on the surface of both asteroids. And this change of mass distribution might also overall change the shape of both or at least one of the asteroids. In this case, reshaping either body is actually going to change their mutual gravitational field, which over time will dramatically change their orbit around the Sun as well. Now this will take many, many years, but this is why it's going to be important to do a follow-up in order to see what actually happens here in 5, 10 or even 20 years. Now European Space Agency is developing HERA, a spacecraft that's going to be doing a kind of a follow-up in 2026, but this is of course just the first step, because the larger asteroid, Didymus, is actually rotating really fast, almost at the brake velocity, basically if it was spinning a little bit faster, it would kind of fall apart. The reshaping induced orbital changes could in theory send this asteroid pair in a somewhat different orbit within the next few decades. Now it's not going to be more dangerous in any way, but because this is an important experiment, it's also important to understand all sorts of long-term effects this might have on various types of asteroids depending on various properties. Nevertheless, the mission has so far been a tremendous success and definitely provides us with at least one method we can use to potentially redirect a dangerous asteroid that might one day hypothetically collide with planet Earth. But if you want to learn more about these hazardous asteroids and which ones are the most dangerous right now, check out one of the previous videos in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are more discoveries, so make sure to subscribe if you'd like to learn more. Check out some of the previous videos in the description, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.